I use a lot of different software when I when I produce the music, um, from you know uh, retail software to freeware, shareware, everything, all kinds of stuff. Um, but I basically basically do everything. Uh, the multitrack I use is Cubase. That's where I compose the music. Then I add a lot of plugins and and soft synths. Not too many soft synths, but uh, mostly a whole bunch of plugins. Um, and everything happens there in that context of, of Cubase. And I some try, sometimes try other software, um, like uh, I tried Pro Tools in the past as well. Uh, Logic, when it still was for both platforms before Mac bought it, um, because I use a PC. And a uh, whole bunch of different. So I like to try new new things because sometimes they bring new 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 uh, new sounds and new ways of composing when you try different software. You can come up with interesting things. Uh, on Martes, I used uh, mostly samples for the uh, the classical instruments that you hear on it, and there's a couple of of uh, of recorded or recorded originally recorded for for Martes um, instruments here and there, but it's mostly sample based from from classical music records and um, a couple of sample libraries and a few, as I told you, are uh, re recorded instruments in, in in the studio in my studio. For uh, for Remembranza, um, it's mostly original recordings, specifically for for the album. There's a uh, there's you know there's pianos that I recorded. Um, there's a, a double bass I recorded with a friend of mine. There's a, it's a cello I played myself, which I can hardly hardly play it. But it, you know it's 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 okay because the uh, the important thing is to to capture the uh, the texture. Then I can always re pitch it in the computer, so it's it's all good. Some flute as well, and. Uh, few other things here and there that I recorded in the past with friends of mine. A trombone I recorded about five years ago. I used it in, in, in Remembranza. So it's mostly original stuff for this album. For Remembranza, I, uh, the, the House of Culture of Tijuana, they lended me a, a piano on a theater for, for an evening. So you know, I just took my computer, press record, put the, put the microphones and recorded about a few hours. Just playing, uh, standard playing, normal playing and plucking the strings, hitting the wood. Just, you know, trying to get the most out of it. And then later on the studio, I, re I listened to the whole thing again and just uh, put m markers on the things that sounded in interesting. And then from those little um, sounds, you know, the, I began to develop the, the pieces, some of them. That it's not the same process for every song, but uh, uh, when I record an instrument, I don't have a clear idea of what really, of what exactly do I want. I just try to make uh, to to find an excuse to make a, a track, and um, and the sounds themselves, when 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 I'm, I am listening back to them, they kind of tell me what what can work and what what not. Yeah, so it's. It's very loose, and I and when I compose, I uh, I'm very open to accidents and to to whatever can can happen. Um, I use uh, different effects all the time. Uh, there's a couple that I use very often. Um, a couple of reverbs, uh, by time works maybe. Um, but I'm always trying new new plugins and new stuff. Uh, as I told you before, a lot of freeware. Um, and also stuff from... Um, what's the name of this company? It's, uh, I think it's ProSonic. They have a couple of very interesting plugins there that uh, with good turnouts. Um, but yeah, every track is, is, is made differently. Uh, sometimes I, I start processing with plugins, sometimes it's just uh, I start with the reverb only, with just a little sounding like a bed or like a drone, and then I begin to add different plugins to see which ones work. So it really depends on the track and what works for the specific track that uh, that uh, I decide which plugins to use.
Um, without inspiration, without the uh, you know the urge to to make music, and uh, without the uh, the creative impulse. That's that's the main motor. Then the the physical tools they come later. You know you can just find what's available and you can surely make something out of them. When I was doing Martes, I was very much into you know minimal techno and stuff like that. And more than specific artists, the the, the aesthetic, the aesthetic of that, and the uh, the feeling of of the uh, that gave to me the, the beats. So I wanted to uh, uh, take a little bit of that and um, and combine it with with the acoustic instrument, see what happened. And actually, the first track I did as Murkov was uh, when I was I was playing around with some with some uh, Morton Feldman and Guilla Cancelli tracks, and uh, I was uh, rip ripping my, my my CD collection, classical CD collection. And uh, I just started to play around, mess around in, in a sound editor, putting the, some bits of music through uh, through some plugins, and it, and this interesting things started to happen. And then I uh, I started to to add some beats to see what what happened, and 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 it worked. It clicked right away. So uh, and since I had that that influence uh, at the moment and that minimal techno thing. Um, that's what was more available to me, you know. So and the rest just happened naturally, really. The first album, it's kind of more, more uh, beat oriented, maybe. Um, uh, and the new album is more focused on the melody and the harmony. And I did that you know, as a natural process, you know. I wanted to do something different from Martes. I didn't know exactly how or what until I was composing and uh, when the first two or three, tr uh, three tracks were done um, I kind of I knew what I was you know I, until I had I had the, the tracks I knew what I was trying to do so uh, I just kept going you know and uh, and at the end I found out they were more harmony and melody orientated it was you know very organic very very natural process. I didn't think about or decide to, okay, this album's gonna be more melody and more harmony. No, it's just a natural process that I, I hardly ever rationalize the composition process. I'm still not sure how it, uh, the next uh, work of tracks that I do will, will turn out. You know, as, as as I mentioned, uh, I'm very open to whatever can happen, and uh, it can it can take any route really, as long as it works for me at that specific moment. And at what do I want to to ex express at that particular moment when I'm composing? It can be very different if I do a track right now or if I do it um, a year from now. Even if I start from the same sources now or one year later it can turn out very differently you know because you're a different person from from one year to to the other it's just myself um uh with my computer and it's, it's a laptop act basically with mixer effects and, and some visuals that i do by, by myself with a with the help of a friend who's a photographer, but in this case, it's just images I recorded myself on my little camera and just made some loops out of it, and uh, more like a wallpaper, like a, a context for the music to, to exist, something like that. I listen to a lot of stuff. Uh, in classical music, uh, there's this guy from, from the Ukraine, that uh, his name is Valentin Silvestrov. Uh, he's one of my favorites at the moment, um, and electronic music I like well just too much. I, I really cannot, to be honest, I cannot keep keep up with uh, what's been released. There's too much for me, and um, and but I do have some some favorites. Uh, actually, from from the label, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of some of my label mates, um, like Efterklang or Icarus, and. Uh, um, also things from from the Raster Norton label, um, 
there's there's too many uh super silent i'm a big fan of super silent and um oh man johan johansson from iceland Sigur Ross as well from iceland the new album is just great and uh, more classical my all-time favorites like Guilla Cancelli and um, of course Arvo Part I do I return to him quite quite often um, Sofia Gubaidolina also been listening to her for quite some time um, yeah, George Frederick Haas which I think is German as well very good there's there's a lot of uh, good stuff out there Now we have the tools more accessible, so it's very easy to become a musician from night to morning. So, and you can you can see that because there's a lot of there's good music, but also there's a lot of mediocre music that you you can tell right away that this person has no notion about music. So I would recommend that uh, they learn a little bit of of, of harmony or, and melody if that's what they want to do. Of course, if they want to do something you know melodic and 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 uh, in that sense, so yeah, please, uh, you know, do some study in, in that sense, either by yourself or school, it doesn't matter, but just, you know, get to know a little bit more. Or whatever style, if it's purely electronic and, and, and experimentation, well, just, you know, get to know your tools first and then, and then release, and then show your music. But uh, I think there's there's a problem of, of dedication right now, of uh, people wanting to do something immediately and, and, and don't take things um, music takes time you know so it's to become a musician proper musician so patience maybe patience to to really get where they want to